Hello everybody, good morning, welcome to the United Stands, I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news on a Friday morning and we've got lots to get into. More stories coming out around Sir Jim Radcliffe, we can give you a pretty much, uh, well, a common sense exclusive around that. More stories coming about Ten Hag's future, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, some big media outlets saying that he's a goner. Could be a goner tomorrow and in December he's in real big trouble. We'll talk about that. Also, the number one target for Manchester United that is most likely to happen. I've already told you who this is going to be, but a few other people are talking about that as well. There's an interesting story about three players being sold in January. We'll get into that as well. Um, and the latest on what is going on with uh, certain positions at Manchester United at the moment. So good morning. Welcome to the show. Hope you're all doing very, very well. Good to be with you. Um, and uh, big weekend for Manchester United, of course. Big weekend of football. And it's going to be a big week next week. A lot of people are talking about this Sir Jim Radcliffe deal. Some people are getting excited. Just will repeat what I said on Twitter or X this morning. Don't really understand why people are getting excited about Sir Jim Radcliffe buying 25% of the club, keeping the Glazers, and we've got absolutely no idea what his plan is. I'm not saying that his plan might be a good plan, but I don't understand how some people are getting excited about what is effectively leaks from the Glazers. Anything you're hearing about this deal is coming from the Glazers. I know that for a fact. I know it for a fact it's coming from the Glazers. So... Any little bits you're getting about this deal is coming from the Glazers. So why would you trust it? Why would you Why would you get excited about it? The bottom line is Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to do some, some, some sort of deal with the Glazers. Now, it could be in a year's time that he owns all the club and he's going to pump 10 billion in. It could be in three years' time he still owns 25% and the Glazers still stay for 10 years. What I'm saying is nobody knows. I'm not saying it's all bad and I'm not saying it's all good. But some people are getting excited about this. We wanted a full sale and we wanted the Glazers out. We're getting neither next week. So why are people getting excited about it? I still, like many people, are sat here going, I'm not, I'm very fearful for our future. I don't think we've got a good future. And I'm not excited about this deal until I see definitive detail of what is going to happen. And all we're getting at the moment, because I'll tell you why I know it's coming from the Glazers, is because all we're getting at the moment from the Ineos side or the Qatari side or the United side is NDAs, nothing's been decided, we can't talk about this. So the only people that legitimately can leak are the Glazers. So, you know, sometimes you just got to use this. You got to use this. All this information that's coming out about the deal, whether it's well sourced or not, and some of it is, it can only come from one place. And would you trust that? I want to hear from Sir Jim. I want to see what his plan is. I want to see how and what he's going to do with this football club. Because if it's not 100% ownership in three years and it's not pumping billions in, we're done. The club's done. We're absolutely done. Um, is it going to happen next week? I went off on a tangent there. It's not even the Friday night show. Um, is this deal going to be done next week? Real, real United fans wanted a full sale. This just feels like a slap in the face. Thanks for being so pragmatic, Rob. Well, look. I'm not saying that Sir Jim Radcliffe won't be the saviour of Manchester United over the next 10 years. I hope he is. And I'm not being anti-Sir Jim. I did a video on this a few weeks ago, but what I am doing is being real. People are getting excited. They don't know anything. They don't know anything about this deal apart from what's being leaked from the Glazers, who are obviously going to be very happy because they're staying. I mean, surprise, surprise, the Glazers are spinning a positive out there about it being a good deal. They're about to pocket £1.4 and keep the club. So, look, we need details. Very good podcast you were on, Mark. Real, genuine and down to earth. Don't get the credit you deserve. Haters are going to hate, says Ian O'Connell. Um, well, just can I just say that, Ian? Uh, um, thank you for everyone listening to that podcast. Um, it was called One Man Show um, because here I am doing the show on my own like I have done for pretty much nine years. Um, some people were saying, oh, that's not, that's not very fair to the people that work behind the scenes. I literally, I don't do the title. And they, they called it One Man Show, I think, because I do the content on my own. It was just, you know, but I actually said in the video that nobody can be successful without a great team working with them. And I have a great team working with me, um, as you know. Um, learning your real... I mean, look, I, I hardly even do it. Well, I do do a lot of content on Match Day, but we've got the fan forum countdown to kick off match reactions. There's a great team behind and there's, there's people you don't even know who work behind the scenes who are absolutely fantastic, which you'll see at the Christmas show, because guess what? The Christmas show isn't a one-man show. It's everybody. Uh, learning your real name last night seems like I've achieved something. We are still Mark to us. Love you, Mark. I am Mark. 
don't, I don't like the real name thing because I, I, everyone calls me Mark. Uh, anyway, let's get into this. So this morning, more stories coming out that um, Sir Jim Radcliffe will take control next week. The name, the the, the, the day Monday has been mentioned. Um, I've been speaking to Ben Jacobs a bit. I've been speaking to other, a few other people that this, this is the latest with Manchester United sale news. It's not getting announced on Monday. It is not being announced on Monday. You know why it's not being announced on Monday? Because on Monday, it's Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral. There is absolute... Man United might get some things wrong in relation to how they handle... Um, PR, you know, the Greenwood thing was an absolute disaster on Richard Arnold's watch, let's be honest. But this club is absolutely not going to announce a Glazer pocketing of share uh, of money on the day of the great Sir Bobby Charlton. So there is no announcement on Monday and any newspaper or any outlet that thinks they're going to announce it on Monday can get in the bloody bin. No one gives a shit. It's about Sir Bobby Charlton on Monday. Monday. There will be no announcement from Manchester United or the Glazers or anybody else on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe, but not on Monday. It's not going to happen. So people who think it's going to happen on Monday, it won't happen on Monday, quite rightly. Um, I think where we're at with this sale stuff is that there is some progression and people are running away with it. Um, I think that we have to have to look at the fact that there is going to be some sort of deal and I think I, I said it a few days ago it will be on the international break but I, I would imagine from I'm speaking to people like Ben Jacobs who's been very good on this um, that at some point there will be a meeting with all the shareholders um, and remember a few weeks ago that was going to happen on a Thursday so maybe next Thursday we will get that meeting where something actually happens and then as a result of that, there could be some announcement from there. But there are still things that need to be done, like a board vote to approve it, um, competition process. Um, when does Jim? When does the Jim take control of the football club? Um, if they do that next week, then there could be an announcement after that. But there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done. And um, as as Ben Jacob said to me, it feels crazy that we've taken 11 months to get to this point and then some people are reporting that we're going to get the deal done in two working days. It, it just won't happen. Um, th there's a lot of contradiction in what's going on, but I think undercurrent, we're getting very, very close to, to some sort of aspect of deal. But this whole... I, I just uh, you've, you've got to be very, very careful as well in relation to PR, haven't you, and spin? Because as I said, I, I think a lot of this is about building momentum and excitement. And I just don't understand how any Manchester United fan that's been Glazer out can be excited about something that they just don't know what it is. How can you get excited about it? It's like the doctor ringing you up and saying, um, we need to see you. It's uh, really important. And you're like, oh, you know what? I might have won the lottery. And everyone's looking at you going, yeah, 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 yeah. It might not be that. It might be something bad. So, look, we just don't know what it's going to be. And some people are getting excited about it. And and let's not forget, my firm belief is that all the positivity is coming from the Glazers. I think the Glazers are leaking stuff out. We get a lot of, st we get a lot of stuff coming from America, don't we? Where do the Glazers live? America. So I think we're getting a lot of positivity around this. And the Glazers are going to be positive about it, aren't they? Um, moving on, look, I, I just wanted to get that out of the way very, very quickly because a lot of people are getting excited about deals and everything like that. But logically, it's not going to happen on Monday and I don't think it's going to happen next week. I think we'll get a lot of story around stuff, but I don't think it'll happen. Um, let's go to the Ten Hag story. Now, this is interesting because there was a little bit of stuff last night that um, Sir Jim wants to back Ten Hag, but then certain people who might be involved don't. I think what this is, is speculation. And then there's a story that's come out this morning about Ten Hag potentially losing his job. So let's start with the stuff last night. So Jim Radcliffe, from what we know, will back Eric Ten Hag. Man City came in and backed Mark Hughes and then they sacked him. A lot of owners sack the manager. It happens. Especially when it, the team is not performing to the level they want to be. I would not be surprised... Uh, sorry, I am not surprised that there is a little bit of speculation around Eric Ten Hag's position. United have had a dreadful start to the season and we're about to get somebody who's going to invest in the football club. The difference is it's not a full owner. He's not the owner, Sir Jim Radcliffe. He is a partial owner, a 25% owner. 
If he says he wants to sack Eric Ten Hag and the Glazers say no, I don't think he can do that because he doesn't own the football club. And this is where I think this is... It's not false reporting. It's just naive reporting. Somebody was talking last night and they were saying... Well, actually, it was, it was a sort of a, a conversation going on on social media that Sir Jim Radcliffe might not want to get rid of Eric Ten Hag, but his new CEO or his new director of football might advise he gets rid of Ten Hag, which could then lead to Sir Jim Radcliffe getting rid of Ten Hag. It's a very good conversation and, and it's a very valid point. Um, but the issue is, if Sir Jim Radcliffe brings in a CEO and a director of football and they say, we don't like Ten Hag, we need to get rid of him. Sir Jim can't sack Ten Hag because Sir Jim has to then go to the Glazers and say, we need to sack Ten Hag. And the Glazers can say, well, you only own 25%, we own 75% and it'll cost us a load of money to get rid of him. We're not getting rid of him. So this is what I mean. People start talking about Sir Jim Radcliffe sacking Eric Ten Hag. He'll only own 25% as far as we know. We don't know what, what, what decisions he can and can't make. And I guarantee you, under the Glazers, he won't be able to make decisions which are writing checks without them saying yes. So people are forg I think people are wandering down this alleyway that Sir Jim Radcliffe's buying the club and he can sack Eric Ten Hag. Hello? He's only buying 25%. Can't sack anybody without the Glazers saying and he, he can sack someone. Now, the Glazers might well say to him, we don't care, you can do what you want. But they still own the football club. And this is what I mean. People are... People are I don't think they're manipulating their minds that Sir Jim Radcliffe's going to own the club. He doesn't own the club. As far as we know, it's 25%. So um, PJ says he might have sporting control. Do you know what sporting control is, PJ? Do you actually know what sporting control is? Because again, this is people just running away with themselves, thinking they know something that they have got no idea about. And I've got no idea about. You know why we've got no idea about it, PJ? Because no one's told us. People are speculating about what Sir Jim can and can't do to suit their own agenda. So PJ, you're telling me I've got a business. I, I sell you 25% and I say run the sporting side. I go on holiday and I come back. You've spent £100 million on players and you've sacked the manager. Do you think I'm going to go? Oh, I t yeah, you've got control. Nonsense. Nonsense. The guy who owns the restaurant doesn't run the restaurant. He gets a restaurant manager to do it. But if that restaurant manager starts writing checks without running it through the owner, he's going to get into big, big trouble. There is no way that sporting control means go and spend what you like, go and sack what you like without running it through the owners who ultimately are only interested in money. And this is what I mean about what people are getting excited about because you don't know what sporting control means. Sporting control could mean I can sack the manager, I can buy who I like. Sporting control could mean every decision I make that involves money, I have to get it signed off by Joel Glazer, which is what has been happening for the last 10 years. We don't have this detail. And I would say to those people who want to go, well, I want to believe Sir Jim's got the control. Why? What in Man United's recent history thinks that you should jump on the positive and trust the positive story? We must always be cynical under this ownership because they lie, they cheat, they take money out of this football club. They're deceitful. They try and take us into super leagues that we never even know about until it's too late. I don't trust anything until I see it written down as to what's going to happen. So is Sir Jim Radcliffe buying 25% of the Glazer shares or 25% in total? We don't know, Trey. We don't know. Alex Bolter, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much for supporting us. We don't know what is going to happen in relation to that. So with regards to Ten Hag, um, I'll bring this next bit, bit in now. So Alan Brazil on Talk Sport has a source, no jokes, um, has a source and is basically saying that he's heard that Manchester United um, are, um, from what he's hearing, Ten Hag won't go before December, but after that, he's in big trouble. And if they don't beat Luton, he's gone. I mean, it contradicts itself straight away. He's not going before December, but after that, he's in trouble. But if he loses tomorrow, he's gone. But he's not going till December. I mean, look, there was another Alan Brazil source a few weeks ago that was um, <laughs> that was outed as as total nonsense, um, and I think this is total nonsense as well. Manchester United do not feed Alan so Alan Brazil. Don't stop. Alan Brazil does not get information from credible people at Manchester United. Um, 
Manchester United at the moment are completely and utterly behind Eric Ten Hag for a multitude of reasons. One, they think he's the right man. Two, financially, they know they can't get rid of him anyway. There is no plan in place for Manchester United to get rid of Eric Ten Hag. Doesn't mean he won't get sacked at some point because if you keep losing games, you will get the sack. And we've got an incredible opportunity for people who want Ten Hag out to see it happen when we come back from the international break with Everton away, Galatasaray away and Newcastle away. You lose two or two or three of those, he's in big, big trouble. I'll admit it. So he's far from safe, but at the moment, they're not looking at it at all. And we've seen with United that when they sack a manager, they never have anything lined up anyway. Everybody knew Mourinho needed to be sacked for two months. They ended up getting Oli as an interim. Everybody knew Solskjaer should have been sacked for two months. They ended up getting Ralph Ranjik in. Like, they don't, they don't plan anyway. Man United will stick with something until they have to do something and then they won't have a plan in place anyway. So for anybody thinking that United are lining up managers, we, do, we never do that. We never line up managers until the summer. So there is no plan in place for Man United to get rid of Ten Hag and there is no source about him getting the sack. And I tell you what, if he loses tomorrow, he won't get the sack. He won't get the sack tomorrow. He, he won't get sacked tomorrow. He won't get sacked until this deal is done with Sir Jim because he's got to say on the sporting side. Um, so it's a nonsense. It's an absolute nonsense. And we won't lose tomorrow anyway. But I will go back to what I was saying there. There is absolutely a chance that when Sir Jim Radcliffe comes in, Ten Hag's place is under scrutiny. Because every person who comes into a business and it's not performing will look at everywhere. We know Richard Arnold is in trouble. We know John Murta is in trouble. Is Eric Ten Hag in trouble? I think he's in less trouble, but he will be scrutinised. Um, and obviously, if Sir Jim Radcliffe is running the football side of things, I don't trust Sir Jim Radcliffe to run the football side of things. What's his pedigree? He will have to get people in who know what they're on about. And if he gets people in who, who know what they're on about and they say, this is not working in the long term, it's going to cost you money and it's not going to work, you'd be better off cutting ties now, then maybe Ten Hag goes. But... As of right now, there is no immediate threat to his job. And and I actually think that's right. And I actually think that's right because I actually think that on Wednesday night, up until with the sending off, we were probably playing some of the better football we've seen this season. Now, how good a Copenhagen is always going to be the throwback, but I actually thought we were quite well organised on Wednesday. I actually thought we played quite intelligent, simple pass and move football, which is something we haven't been doing. You look at Rashford, he was very disciplined. Instead of taking people on or trying to shoot, he was, you know, passing the ball, doing the defensive work. So, look, um, I think the Ten Hag noise is just media bollocks, as per usual, trying to create a headline. But United fans see, see through it. I mean, you know, is it a slow is it, is it a slow news day on Talk Sport or something? I don't know. I mean, I've, had, I've heard that Ten Hag's going to get the sack if he loses to Luton. Well, what a surprise. His job will be on... <laughs> Anybody loses to Luton and their job's on the line, isn't it? So, yeah, it's, it's a nonsense. Whoever convinced Joel to spend £85 million on Anthony should be kept. If they can convince him to do that, anything is possible, says Rory C. Well, it's actually interesting, Rory, because let's just move it on, actually. There was a story this morning um, somebody sent me. I think it was in The Sun. And it was uh, something along the lines of that Anthony Martial, Sancho and Anthony will be sold in the January transfer window. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. What a load of bollocks. I say, that's bollocks. Slow sports news, bollocks. Bollocks sports news. It's not slow sports news. It's bollocks sport news. It's bollocks. Absolutely no chance at all. For one, we wouldn't be able to sell those three. And for two, we won't sell those three. Sancho will go. I don't think Sancho will even be sold. You know, I'm talking about selling those three. I don't think we'll sell any of them. I think Sancho will go on loan. I don't think we're going to sell him. We're definitely not going to be able to sell Anthony. And I don't think we'll sell Martial. Martial's got like six months left on his contract if we don't give him another year. Martial's going the same way as David De Gea and Ander Herrera. He's walking out, the, and Jesse Lingard. He's walking out this club for nothing because we've messed up. So Martial won't go anywhere in January. We won't sell him. Anthony, we're not going to sell him because no one's going to give us 80 million. So he's not going to be sold and he's not going to go anywhere at all. I think Anthony stays. And Sancho, I don't think, will sell either. So it's a, it's a nonsense, an absolute nonsense. Uh, loving the podcast. Cheers from Alabama, says Maxim. Thank you very much. Uh, podcast, new podcast episodes out this morning, actually previewing the weekend. Um, 
But what I do find interesting in the transfer world, and some of you may have noticed it yourself, is that um, there's more and more momentum building up around Tadebo now. Now, I've been telling you for a couple of weeks that Tadebo will sign for Man United in a month, beginning with Jay next year. And it'll be January, June or July. And that's as far as I'm going to go. If somebody wants to go further than that, they're guessing. But it will happen in either next summer or in January. And I'm not going to say which because I'm not doing the deal. But it's such an easy deal for Manchester United to do. And it's a deal that Ten Hag wants. So it's just about when they do that. Now, what I was told is that Nice are going to be very reluctant to do that deal in January because they're having a good season. However, Sir Jim Radcliffe owns Nice and he's about to own part of Manchester United and Man United desperately need a centre-back. So there is an opportunity to do something in January. I would I would lean towards the summer because Nice would be more comfortable with that. We don't know what the player is more comfortable with. He's got the Euros to come as well. He, The player might just go, you know what? I know what I'm doing at Nice, I'll move in the summer, I've got Euros coming up, do I need to disrupt myself and season adapting to Man United and jeopardising you know, my Euro spot? I think the summer probably is more logical, but I wouldn't rule it out in January because it's such an easy deal to do. If, we, if Sir Jim Radcliffe didn't own Nice, I'd say we won't get that deal done till the summer, but because he does, I think that you can't rule out January. Um, the things that would stop it happening in January, someone just said there, well, the things I've just said there, Nice might not want it to happen. The player might want to wait till the summer. But also, I think you've got to bring into account just how quickly we're going to get a director of football in and just how much money is going to be available in January. So we are at December. We are, we are, we are three weeks away from December. And then after December, it's January. So is that enough time for any deal to be done that um, puts some money into the club? And it depends how... Depends how trustworthy the relationship is. I mean, look, let's be honest. I don't like the Glazers. I don't trust the Glazers. And I don't think they like Man United or Man United fans. So there's nothing in common. You know, we're not, you know, we're not friends, are we? I don't know. They don't know me. I don't know, I know them. All I know is what they've done to this football club. And I don't like them, um, which is fine. I think Sir Jim Radcliffe has a close relationship with these people, which 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 makes me ridiculously uncomfortable anyway. So they they have a close relationship, and the reason I'm saying that is that if they have a close relationship, and a few things get signed, and what I mean is by this, look, you're going to get 25%. It's all signed there. We've just got to go through the official channels, which are going to take a month or two. So Jim might go, well, look, it's going to take a month or two, but the January transfer window's there. We can't miss this. Here's 200 quid, 200 million pounds. Go and buy some players. So Jim might not get it all signed off until late January, but he might trust the Glazers to go, look, let's start doing stuff now. Let's start doing stuff now. Even though I'm not officially a, 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 a stakeholder yet, we can start doing stuff. Let's let's get, let's get um, Mitchell in. Let's get a new CEO in. That might happen. Now, you would never do that if you were buying a house. You would never buy a house in the next town and then say to the people you're buying it from, let's start getting the kitchen done, let's get the carpets done, because you just don't know with a house sale whether it's going to fall through. But there might be some things in this contract that do take a while to get officially ratified, but doesn't prevent Sir Jim from going, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Because I think in relation to the January transfer window, if they wait for everything to be official, we'll miss it. Um, and and I think anybody that gets hold of Manchester United is going to want to get moving straight away. So Jim coming in doesn't change much. Still have a bloated wage bill and an inability to sell players, even with a new CEO, director of football issue, is the wages, says Sweeney. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. But look, I, we were talking about this last night. I don't know why I do that, you know, sometimes. Is it a stretch? Massive news. I'll do it for massive news. Massive news is that, and we were speaking about this last night, is it a conspiracy theory? Is it a reality? Well, I don't know. But what we do know is that Cristiano Ronaldo was our biggest wage earner and he's gone. David De Gea was one of our biggest wage earners and he is gone. Jaden Sancho is one of our biggest wage earners and he's, he's going to be gone. And then you've got Varane and Casemiro who are our biggest, two of our biggest wage earners and they could be going. So... 
is it coincidental or is it conspiracy that a lot of our big wage earners are moving or on the way out of the football club? Um, interestingly, in relation to Varane, there is absolutely nothing at the moment in relation to Saudi Arabia. But what I would say about that is that doesn't make me feel confident because we could be January the 28th and Saudi Arabia could pick up the phone. You know, Man United might have no intention of getting rid of Varane and Varane might want to stay. But if that phone call happens in late January, it can still happen. Um, I think that, look, we're still very early days with Ten Hag and your opinion is obviously potentially going to be different to mine at times. But I, I still think that, ten, well, uh, my opinion with Ten Hag is that there's a great thing here, actually. Why doesn't Eric Ten Hag get rid of Rashford too then? He is a big earner and the biggest disappointment to the club because because Ten Hag loves Rashford, so he's not going to get rid of him. But there's a great point here. If I'm Sir Jim Radcliffe, my message to Sir Jim Radcliffe is this. I've seen Ten Hag try and sell Harry Maguire and the club say it's not enough money, so he stays. I've seen Man um, West Ham try and buy Scott McTominay and United have rejected the bid because it's not enough, not because he's not for sale. So Manchester United, and this has happened with other players, but I'm just dealing with the summer, and it happened with Donny van der Beek as well. The deal couldn't get done. But look, what I'm trying to say is that it's very evident in the Ten Hag era that he's tried to sell players and the club have said it's not enough money and then Ten Hag has to use them. In January, it very well might be the case that Ten Hag doesn't want Varane to go because... He's not going to get a replacement till the summer. So he keeps Varane. This happened with Ronaldo as well. By all accounts, Ronaldo wanted to go in the summer because Ten Hag had basically said to him, you're not part of my plans. But Ten Hag made the decision that they weren't going to let him go because the money they weren't going to get the money to replace him. So Ten Hag was like, well, I'd rather have him here than him go and not be replaced. And that's a financial decision. So my point is... With Ronaldo, with Maguire, with McTominay, we've kept players that Ten Hag would like to have got rid of, but only if he had replacements coming in. And because the club couldn't get the money they wanted, the replacements wouldn't have come in, so Ten Hag said, I'll keep them. That's not the way to run a football club. That's something that Sir Jim Radcliffe needs to look at. You cannot have a situation where a manager is looking to get rid of players, but ends up keeping them because, because the business side fails. Because that's unfair on the fans and it's unfair on the manager. If I if I'm asked if I if I get an offer for a centre back and I say, yeah, he's not part of my plans, let's sell him. And then the club say we can't get the fee that we want, so you'll have to keep him. And I get you know, that that's not that's that's not football, that's business. We've got to be a football club. And if you lose money doing that, you lose money doing that. We should have took the thirty million for Maguire and given Maguire five million to cover his wages. Because will we ever get that again? And is he part of Ten Hag's long-term plans? And that's something that Sir Jim's got to do. We've got to stop being a business and start being a football club. So that if... In that, you know, you might not get the money you think the player's worth because the player's worth what people are willing to play to pay. And next summer, if somebody says, we'll give you 20 million for Harry Maguire and Ten Hag doesn't see him as part of the future plans and the club go, well, he's worth 35, so we're not taking it. And you can't get any more than 20 you take the 20 because that's what a football club does that's what Klopp would have and that's what Pep would have did you see that as things stand in the Premier League will not get an extra spot in the Champions League next season due to the performance as a Newcastle Premier League currently ranked fourth says Rory well it was never guaranteed Rory and it's not something we need to worry about at the moment I mean based on the last few years fifth place in the Premier League would be enough to be in the new Champions League because of how we perform in Europe but obviously Newcastle have performed badly we're performing badly you don't automatically get fifth place being in Europe. It's based on how you perform in Europe and the best leagues will get the extra spot. So you should, we, 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 we are, we're all, I mean, I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think fifth place in the Premier League should get in the Champions League. I think you're just ruining the Premier League. I, I like, I like top four getting the Premier League. It makes it more competitive. You dilute the Premier League when you start giving out more spots to the Champions League. Um, but we, so we'll, we'll have to work on the assumptions that it's fourth. If there are issues between Varane and Ten Hag, could PSG sweep in for him if Varane wants to stay in Europe, says Will. 
Well, they could do. I mean, look, we have a press conference reaction at two o'clock today. Um, if any journalist is doing their job efficiently, then they will ask a question on in the press conference about the um, situation with Varane because it's very, very clear. I mean, I've seen United fans saying uh, it looks like um, it looks like Varane was sabotaging the game on on Wednesday, which is incredible. But I don't agree with that, by the way. But the fact the fact that everybody knows everybody knows that Varane wasn't in the right frame of mind to play for Man United has to be queried. If I was a journalist, which I'm not. But if I was in that press conference and they pointed at me, my first question would be, Eric, you dropped Varane for the Manchester derby. You've had Johnny Evans as your starting centre-back pairing. With all due respect, Rafael Varane is regarded to be one of the best centre-backs in the world. Why is he currently out of the team? And we saw on Wednesday night, when he came on, he really wasn't in the right headspace and looked very unhappy. And I'd just sit back and everyone would go, what a question, get him back every week. And Ten Hag will be thinking, you're a little twat. Um, but he'd, he'd have to answer it. Now, he might go, uh, nothing, uh, nothing. But, you know, I think it's a question that needs answering. I think some questions are a waste of time. You know, what's happening with Jaden Sancho? I've told you 20 times. That's a great question. That's a question that should be asked today. And I'm sure some of you, maybe even some of those journalists are watching. You know, that is a great question to ask. And, and it's not an exclusive from me. It's the question everybody would want to be asked. Like, it's a very valid question. He was our most important centre-back last season because with Martinez. Martinez is injured, therefore he's our most important centre-back. He's our most experienced centre-back. He's the most decorated centre-back. Why is he not in the team? Why is he unhappy? What is going on? And if Ten Hag says it's because I think Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire are better, why was Harry Maguire your fifth-choice centre-back last season then? What 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 what's going on in your head, Eric? Because I think this is a great point as well. Obviously, I I back Ten Hag. I want him to stay. I think he can do great things at this football club. But I can't lie as well and say that there are huge question marks around what he does this season. I I almost feel like it's a reset for Ten Hag. Should Man United lower their expectations for a season or two? Don't care about the table and focus on creating a solid foundation to build on. What like the last ten years? Kill him. We've been lowering our expectations for 10 years. It's nothing new. Can you try and find out any news when Luke Shaw and Malassia is going to be back? Could be big boost if it's this month, says Levi. Um, from what I was told, Malassia could be in contention after the international break. So, but it's two or three weeks away. Uh, Luke Shaw, the last I heard with Luke Shaw was more around early December, mid-December. So, I mean, God, imagine coming back for the Liverpool game. He'll still be having nightmares from the last one. But look, I, I think that um, the... Let's just get rid of that person there. Um, I think with regards to the uh, Ten Hag um, situation, that there are a few things that are just very puzzling at the moment. And the, the signing of Mason Mount for 55 million, and then he won't pick him in any game, really. And when he does bring him on, he's in a different position. It's baffling, the Mason Mount thing. Um and some people will say, well, it's because we can't play a certain way. Well, that, so, 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 so we're admitting that Mason Mount's one-dimensional. If I've heard people say, he can't pick Mason Mount at the moment because Luke Shaw and Martinez are injured, so he can't play a higher line and play more on the front foot. Well, what the fuck did we spend £55 million on a player then that we can't pick if we get a couple of injuries in defence? It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, the Anana signing, I like Anana. I hope it works out but I'll never agree with it. It was a waste of money and we'd be better off with De Gea this season. I would have waited a year for Inanna. I would have kept De Gea for one more year and focused on more important areas like centre-back. Um, the centre-back situation is really interesting because Varane's fit, but he's picking Evans and Maguire. Maguire was fifth choice centre-back at the end of last season and we, won we had 17 clean sheets. He's now first choice centre-back and Varane is on the bench with Lindelof. What's changed there? What? Why? You know, the Sancho situation. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, question marks around Ten Hag this season, and why we 
we're, we're almost at odds with what we were doing last season. We're at odds with what he bought in the summer. Amrabat looks like he's never going to get a chance again. Um, Mount, I don't see how he gets into the team. But it is survival football as well. I have to acknowledge that. We're playing this style of football at the moment, which is very much about picking the likes of Maguire and McTominay and Ericsson and Bruno um, and just and, and, and Evans and just sort of living off vibes, isn't it? It's living off that passion of players that might not be good enough, but they will give everything, which is never... When does that change? Are we just going to do that forever now? I, I think that... One of the big, one of the greatest things I heard about the Wednesday night game was that even if that team plays well, how long will it last? And that was before kickoff. It was one of you in the chat. I was read, I read it on the night. I forget who it was. It was before the game had kicked off, and somebody said, "Don't have a problem with the team. Can understand why he's picked it because he can trust it. But let's be honest. Looking at that eleven that he picked on Wednesday night, there's no longevity in it." And it won't get top four. And and it's true. You look at that team that he picked and you go, no matter how hard those players try and no matter how well we play, football still does come down to having the 11 best players on the pitch. And that 11 that he picked on Wednesday might be the team that he trusts right now. But when does he change it? Does he wait to get battered again? Or does he stick with it? And that's I think that's a big problem for United fans at the moment is that it's really difficult to see the vision. It's really difficult to see the plan. And everybody wants to see the vision and the plan. Everyone wants to see the path. No one gets in a car and says, let's just go for a drive. Some people do, but like there's normally a destination. And at some point you want a destination. You can go for a little, let's just go anywhere for a bit. But eventually you need to start finding a... Um, a destination. Rizek, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much. Um, Eric Ten Hag is fighting player power. He may very, very well be, Klaus, and I, I wouldn't disagree with that. And it's a very, very difficult thing to do when you are trying to build something and then the people within are causing problems, pulling in different directions. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is going on at Manchester United. There may well be ego. There may well be people who think they're better than they are. There may well be people who think that they're more important than there are. There may be people who are looking to get out. I mean, I, I think there's another very interesting thing to say that when you look at that United squad, how many of them are going to be willing to build again? I mean, Bruno's been part of three rebuilds. Rashford's probably been bore, built part about part of four or five. Um they're young enough to do another one, but some players will either not want to do another one or not be of, of an age where they, they want to do another one. Do you think there is a problem with Amrabat with the lack of a proper pre-season, says Drake? There is 100% a problem with Amrabat and a lack of pre-season. Nobody wanted to acknowledge it. I was losing my shit about it. I was like, he basically was on strike from Fiorentina for a month. Like, he wasn't playing games. He wasn't having a proper training session for a month Ten Hag said about Anthony in his last press conference that Anthony was really sharp at the start of the season had a really good pre-season and then he missed three weeks because of what was going on in Brazil so if Ten Hag is saying that Anthony's off the pace because he missed three weeks after a pre-season how far is Amrabat off, off the pace if he didn't even have a pre-season and joined up late I think United's general fitness has been a problem all season we saw it against um I couldn't believe I couldn't believe and and it won't it won't it won't ever get analyzed because it's it's happened and it's gone but I still remember that opening game of the season against Wolves at Old Trafford and I was almost like have we literally just come off the beach was it a dream that I saw us playing pre-season in America because I couldn't believe how fit and sharp Wolves were compared to us it it was it was it was mind-blowing and I think there has to be a question about United's general fitness and 
um, sharpness this season anyway. I don't think we I don't think in general we had a very good preseason and we saw that in the first few games of the season. Morning Mark, trust you well. How can Ten Hag progress if the owners don't give him what he needs and hopefully Sir Jim can get us some players, says Rizik. Well, we'll see. As I say, if you're joining in a, a little bit late, it's um it's not going to be an announcement on Monday because that's Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral, which is obviously going to be a very big and sad day for Manchester United Football Club and they will not um, be announcing it then. I suspect that we're going to get some sort of news trickling out over the next few days around Sir Jim. Um, all I'm waiting for, and I'll say what I've said before, is I want to know what's happening. And I don't want to be if, buts or maybes. I want to know what's happening. I don't want constant trickle of positivity from the Glazer camp, which is all we're getting at the moment. Every little bit of detail you get that sounds true will be coming from the Glazers. It's not coming from Sir Jim. So I want to know what the plan is. I want to know what it is because ultimately, as we sit here now, Manchester United are owned by the Glazers and will be next week and will be next month and will be next year. How is that good for us? How is that a full sale? So I want to know what the plan is. And I'm not in any way excited at the moment about United's future on the pitch and off the pitch. I'm not excited. I'm not optimistic. We've been down this road before. We've had people saying we're, you know, we're capable of doing anything in the transfer market. We've had people saying it's a three-year plan and we're going to win the league. We've had all this before. I'm not excited about the future of Manchester United just because the Glazers are spinning out some positive stories about what's going to happen on the sporting side. If Sir Jim's in charge of the sporting side, can he sign the checks? Can he sack the manager? Or does Joel Glazer have the final say? Joel Glazer's had the final say on most Man United decisions for 10 years. You can't sell Martial. You can't buy Perisic. We're not spending this. We can spend that. That's been going on for 10 years. Is he going to give that up? Does he? Does it look like he'll give that up? Does it look like they wanted to give that up? If they wanted to give it up, they'd have sold the club for £5 billion. I don't believe for one minute that Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to have the final say on sacking managers, buying players. I think, he, I think he'll recommend it. I think he'll have a say, but I still think the Glazers ultimately, with the majority ownership and money motivated, I still think that they will have the final say. And we need to know about this. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, make sure you smash a like on the video. We're back at two o'clock with Eric Ten Hag's press conference. I'm really hoping we at least get something on this Varane situation. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, don't forget... That's been up there. That's, that's up there from last night. Didn't even realise. Um, links in the description and you can scan the QR code for the Christmas show. Really looking forward to that. Speaking about that last night. Career mode is back today. Normal time, half past three. Yes. And uh, don't forget to listen to the podcast, Goldbridge Saves Football. That was out this morning as well. Take care, everyone. I'll speak to you all in a little bit. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.